But how did black artists treat you? Great. That's where I'm. Listen, like I, Tupac I, or Biggie I, or those guys. Oh, good friends of mine. I was I was friends with Tupac way before he even blew up. When NWA, he was Digital Underground, what? NWA. I was the opening act. Listen, I was the opening act for the opening <laughs> act for the opening act for the opener for the opener when we did the Stop the Violence tour with NWA, Stetsa Sonic, EPMD, Sir Mix a Lot. So I was that that kid out there, and they were they were great oh, friends. Man. They embraced me, man. And that, my whole crowd was always black. I never thought I'd ever play for white people until my music went number one and when it went number one all of a sudden my crowds went well i went from smaller crowds to huge stadiums in rap music it just hadn't been done like that before so for me i was just like whoa and here i am on tour now with uh, i think it was mc hammer and it's just gone mainstream and it was us because it was my record that was first rap record to go number one so it was it was pretty phenomenal how it just you know we brought it kind of out of the hood and into the mainstream the the importance of video to that number one hit was what? Well, Ice Ice Baby came out. Yeah. I was 16 years old when I wrote that song, and it didn't really come out for three years later. We didn't have enough money to buy a video, so I had to borrow some money to make the video, and, and we just you know kind of scrounged it together and, and put it out. It became the number one video on MTV ever, probably the cheapest video ever played on MTV. <laughs> but uh, it, was a, it was an amazing phenomenon, and um, when the Ninja Rap came out is when it really set in and put the concrete in. Because everybody, like you and I, grew up to the Ninja Turtles, but everybody today is growing up to them. It's huge. It's bigger than, you know, you would, you would never think Star Wars would be topped or Star Trek would be topped because, you know, being us, we, we, we kind of grew up to that, and that's like the big phenomenon. Well, Ninja Turtles has tripled. Both of those together combined. It's amazing. They have a whole row, you know, when you go into the department stores of, or whatever, you go in there and you see Ninja Turtle aisle. It's crazy how big it's gotten. Well, how big? Give people an idea of how big you were at the at the peak of your career. 160 million records and still selling. We're, my record that was released 20 something years ago, I, I was to the extreme uh, has it, it, every year has sold over two or three million copies every year. Still since it's coming out, just this year as alone is already probably three or four million. It's crazy, phenomenon, uh, to the point where most rappers that everybody think is big in America. There's another step. It's called the world. And I never thought that rap music would leave America. And, and all of a sudden, I'm playing in Russia, China. I've played in Muslim countries. And <laughs> I mean, it's crazy where, you, where it'll take you. And, 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 and the people don't even speak English. And then I get letters and stuff back talking about, I learned to speak English on your music. By the way, what is a gauge in a nine? <laughs> and did you solve the problem? Yeah. yeah, what was the problem that you were supposed to solve? Any problem. It's just being positive. If there's a problem, yo, solve it. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.